In this video, Skyhorse Tech shows you how to set up a ZF9P Basin Rover. Who's Zed? Zed's dead on, baby. Zed's dead on. Hey everybody, in this video we're going to go over the ZF9P GNSS module. Now we have two of these. One is set up as a base station in a fixed location. This one is set up as a rover, which we have on a survey pole that is completely mobile and we can receive corrections over a 3G network. So later on in this video, we'll go over, over everything from wiring to configuring and use center to pretty much anything you need to do to get this thing up and going. All right, real quick, let's go over the basic components we have here on our survey pole. Now you can make this any way you'd really like. We have it set up for, if we need to, larger, longer missions with our rechargeable battery. These are Sony NPF batteries. Um, you can get on Amazon or anywhere else. Uh, here is a blind spot port for that. And through this, we're able to charge two USB devices at the same time. One right now we have is our cell phone that is running the uh, MapIt GPS and also Left Bureau Intrip client. And our other port, we are charging our ZF9P module, which is in this IP67 waterproof case. Now we'll go over the wiring and everything later, but it's probably a good idea to have this if you're having a rover, just to have it in a waterproof case, um, just to keep it safe and dry. Also on this, we have a, what a lot of camera people use is a V-lock or V-channel system where you can take this off and it's pretty, pretty neat. So that will allow you to take it off and put it back on pretty easily. And it keeps it secure also. But other than that, right now we have our regular GNSS antenna. It's just a small one that you can get probably for $20. We're gonna upgrade that to a Harkson GPS 1000 model, which will give us a lot better accuracy and, and ability to do missions that have maybe tree cover um, or not a very good view of the horizon. All right, let's go inside and we'll go over the wiring the general idea of the whole entire system and how to configure this in use center, as well as some other maybe helpful hints that you need to get this up and going. All right, let's go. For those of you who are watching, you're probably familiar with the ZF9P module is. As their website states, it's a multi-band GNSS receiver that delivers centimeter level accuracy in seconds. Now, like us, a lot of people are using this for RTK purposes in drones like UAS or in ground-based operations. The incredible thing about this hardware is the price point. Now, previously to get a multi-band RTK module, you're looking at thousands of dollars. Here we can get this very easily for around $230. Ublox makes the chip but there are other companies that have developed this into their own boards and customized them. Ublox uh, itself has created a board called the C099 development board. There's also SparkFun, RG Simple, DroTech, and a couple others that have developed their own boards that are for sale around the same price point. We ultimately decided to go with the SparkFun board. They're based right outside of Denver, Colorado. There's nothing wrong with the other boards or the other companies, but it doesn't hurt that they have a ton of detailed information and documentation online, as well as a store that sells all the peripheral hardware. And also they have this quick system, QWIIC, which is an I2C port where you can daisy chain additional hardware such as LCD screens, Arduino boards, etc. Just to clarify, we're not compensated by SparkFun or anyone for this video. We're just reviewing it for informational purposes out there. Now, SparkFun has this GPS RTK2 hookup guide, which is a great place to start even before you purchase the, the board, just to get an idea of what it can do. Now, 
if you scroll down there's a video but there's also information regarding each port USB I2C which is the quick port the two UART ports which is nice um, suggestions as far as how you should configure each port in uCenter which we'll go over later and also setting up a Bluetooth module on one of those UART ports now we'll show you how we did that later but this is just a great reference as far as seeing what the capacity of this thing is and what it can do now we would be remiss if we didn't mention two people who have deep knowledge and documentation on the ZF9P module uh, going back through past last year 2019 the first is Deep South Robotics aka Roby now he has several videos out there on YouTube uh, with regard to the F9P module um, and also information in his blog that goes through what he's done to get these going and to um, optimize each of those through uCenter and demonstrates how he's uh, tested those out for your accuracy. The other is RTK Lab Explorer who has tons of information and knowledge about the ZF9P module. Um, I'm not aware of too many videos they have on YouTube, but they have a ton of postings on their website with regard to RTK Lab and also the ZF9P module, setting those up for um, RTK and also PPK. Now, if you're into Arduino and Raspberry Pi, they also have um, other posts out there on how to integrate those into your not only F9P but also your older M8 T or M8 P GNSS receivers so definitely go out there and look them up they have a well of information that would um, greatly benefit anyone that's getting into this let's take a look at how we at Skyhorse have our system set up we have two ZF9P modules one is configured as a base and the other as a rover now when you get these in the mail they're both configured the same with default setups you just need to modify them and we'll show you how we did that now just a quick overview here is the base we'll show you a little closer diagram of the wiring later but we are transmitting our output rtcm and ubx which is ublocks corrections through a 3DR or SICK radio to our base laptop. We're then taking that data, part of it we log for later PPK processing if we, if we need to. Otherwise, everything goes through this service called SNP, which is a free website that allows us to send corrections. We create our own NTRIP caster and from there we can pull those corrections in either through a radio or over a 3g slash wi-fi or anything else we want to configure for us we have it sending out to this service related to snip it's called rtk to go now because we don't have a static ip here we needed to use this RTK to go server, which is also free up to a certain limit. I believe you get one or two uh, ports you can use. We only need one, so that's fine. And all that does is provide you a static IP where you can go in through a uh, left bureau entrip client or any other entrip client that you have on your rover here we're using an Android uh, smart device with that free app that goes out it pulls that data those corrections from the RTK to go server and our mount point that we created it then through Bluetooth sends the RTCM corrections to the rover and then also we get the NMEA messages back, which we then process through uh, our, we're 
using MapIt GPS, but you can also use GNSS Commander, and there's a bunch of other free apps out there for processing your RTK, GCPs, or anything else you need for later on, even for PPK processing. So real quickly, we'll go over the wiring diagram. It's pretty easy here. And as long as you have basic soldering skills, you should be able to accomplish this with no problem. Now, on that SparkFun GPS RTK2 hookup guide, it gives further information as far as which ports are where. Um, real quick, this is the UART2 port, which only sends RTCM corrections. And here is our UART1 port, which we're using. This allows us to send RTCM. Also, we can send the UBX or UBlox messages through that. Now, we have this just simply hooked up to our 3DR radio. You'll notice that the TX on the board is connected to the RX, and likewise, the RX is connected to the TX on the radio. Um, our th we're grabbing our three volts from here, 3.3 volts to our VCC, and of course the ground are linking up there. You have this antenna hookup here. Um, right now we're just using a basic antenna. We're going to upgrade that at some point shortly to a Harkson uh, antenna, but for now we're using a suggested GNSS antenna provided by SparkFun. Um, now on our rover, it's we're using the same ports basically, the UART one. Now we have a SparkFun Bluetooth module here. You can use any Bluetooth module you want that has a serial port um, available. Um, just like in the radio here, we have the TX connected to RX on the Bluetooth and then RX to TX and then your other 3.3 and rounds. Okay, here's a shot of how we've been testing our system. We have the base module over there. You can see this has the radio 3DR sick radio. Now we have the antenna going right through it through a waterproof connector. That's a 915 megahertz. And you see the ZF9P module in there. And it's a pretty basic um, setup where we have the USB connection coming through where we can connect and disconnect. And then the antenna also connection through there. The connection on the rover module is very similar, except we don't have the 3DR radio. We have the Bluetooth module, you'll see that there at the bottom. Otherwise, it's pretty much similar. Um, you have the USB connection, which powers it, and the antenna connection coming through from that side. Now, you'll see this box underneath here. We had originally gone with this larger box, but it was a little bit too bulky. It was nice that you can open it and close it. It's waterproof um, pretty easily. On this smaller module, smaller box, you need to unscrew it, but it's not that big a deal. You're not gonna need to access it that much. And then you can see our, uh, we have that base connected to our U center on one of our desktops. And here is our SNP connection, which is also the RTK to go connection. And this is just our setup for testing. Um, notice also we use this, we bought this 3.3 foot extender for a radio um, receiver that goes into the laptop. When you're connected to the laptop directly in the USB port, you may get some interference from the laptop itself, which knocks out the signal once in a while. With this three foot um, cable, it really uh, helps out. We haven't had any drops since then. Okay, let's take a look real quick at U-Center. It's a free program uh, from U-Blocks designed to configure, program an array of all of their uh, GNSS modules. 
for this this is how we set up our module and we also configure it to see what messages we want to send out from either the base and or the rover now I'm not going to go into detail here on how to use this there's plenty of other YouTube videos out there including Roby who goes through um, a lot of the explanation on the initial startup how to get this thing going and connect it to your receiver or base which is pretty simple you just hook it up to your USB port on your computer and then you select the COM port it's connected to and then hopefully you should see a green uh, indicator here showing you have a connection um, some people have, I've seen have had to um, upload or download drivers to their computer but we didn't have that problem it started up right away and here you can see we're connected to our base we have time over here um, which means that it's sending out corrections and you can see that the, the various satellites it's connected to and the, the signal strength now let's take a look real quick at configuration view this is one of the main screens you're going to look at and use um, when setting these up uh, the, one of the main tiles on here is going to be the message MSG this is where you configure either your base or your rover to show and to show what you're currently set up and to update it to send out certain messages RTCM uh, you can send out NMEA which we do on our rover but this is our base we don't want to clog up the bandwidth on that so we don't bother with that but we're sending uh, raw uBlocks uh, messages here with the observation and the navigation messages the SFRBX here let's take it I'll show you real quick of how we have our messages set up currently okay here are our current base outbound messages we have set up through uCenter now uh, some of these may go away eventually we might take some of these out but two that are definitely going to stay are these uBlocks raw x and sfrbx messages uh, we'll be using those for observation and navigation messages we'll be logging those uh, for later ppk processing but they're also useful for rtk now for those of the those of you who are just sending out rtcm messages these are pretty much the most common ones you'll see note that this 1005 message usually you only send it every 10 seconds that's your base location which won't be changing that much so you don't need to send it as often okay while we're on the topic of messages let's go over the rover messages that we have set up currently um, again some of these are a little extra you might not need however we're just using these right now in testing now just to reiterate it may be confusing at first um, it's not clear in a lot of the videos you watch about this is all these messages you are configuring are for the outbound message so the messages for the base are what the base is sending what you're configuring for the rover is what the rover is sending out it is not configuring what you're receiving so the rover is going to be receiving RTCM messages but you don't necessarily need to configure those uh, here it'll automatically take those and process them now for us since we're using a third-party app on the rover through the Bluetooth it needs the NMEA messages in order to display the current lat long and other additional um, positioning information the two big ones that we've seen are this GGA and GLL we have a couple of these extra ones in here that may not be needed one quirky thing we found is these PUBX 003 and 4 we have those configured on outputting on the USB now currently if we turn these off our satellite um, dis display on U Center um, it, it seems to take it offline um, and 
so just for the purpose of visualization on U Center, we leave these as is on the USB out. Now, two of the other screens you're going to use quite often in U Center are ports where you configure what type of messages are going to be sent on each port, such as I2C, UART1, UART2, USB, etc. And if necessary, what baud rate you're going to use on that port. Another tab or screen you're going to use is the rate. Now, you're not going to be updating this that often, but you do need to set this up on your initial uh, setup. For the base and rover, let's just take a look real quick at how we have these two screens set up. Okay, here's how we have our ports and rates set up in our base and rover modules. Now, for the base, we're just using pretty much our UART1 in production. We have that sending out the U-Blocks, UBX, and RTCM messages. And the USB ports primarily used for debugging and for um, basically communicating with uCenter. For the rover, we're also using UART1. In this one, we're reading in the UBX and RTCM messages. And we are writing out the UBX and NME, NEMA messages. Um, we're going to use that the NEMA really for the third party app where we are uh, using those for logging our GCPs or whatever um, we're trying to get a position on at that point. And again, the USB is primarily used for debugging in our uh, use center application. Now for the rates, we are using the base module, we're using a 1000 milliseconds, which is one hertz. That's pretty much standard. And same with the Rover, we're using a 200 millisecond standard rate. And that uh, is equivalent to the five hertz. Let's kind of go around the horn here, going from the base counterclockwise through the process and try to get a little bit more explanation on what each step is entailing. Um, so obviously the first part of the process is it starts with your base module. Um, again, we are sending out those corrections over a radio. Um, you get these on Amazon. Uh, 3DR radio, pretty much 30 to 40 bucks. Um, they're pretty ubiquitous now with the UAS drone uh, world, so they're pretty much everywhere. Now we are sending those corrections, RTCM and UBlox messages, over to our base laptop. Now this um, right now is processing that data and forwarding it through this free service called SNP and its sister service called rtk to go Let's take a quick look at what that entails. For those who aren't uh, familiar with SNP, it's a service that's available um, at some levels for free. There's a light version, and that allows you to create a SNP caster that receives the GNSS corrections data from your base station and forward it to the internet where it is available uh, for any other operation you're using, either UAS or handheld rover in the field to create uh, GCPs or control points. So there's a whole vast number of reasons you could use that. Now, for our case, we do not have a static IP uh, you can get one through your IP provider. Usually they charge you anywhere from 10 to $20 a month. And there's another option though. You can use this other service, which is created by the same people that created SNP. They created this RTK to go that allows you to forward on your corrections through their static IP. And in turn, Anyone in the public that wants to use your corrections can use them. Now, they're not going to be 
any good unless they're within you know 20 to 30 miles at least um, at, a, at the most from you but you can go out there and and use those now we're gonna take a look right now at their current list now they just updated their website actually a couple hours ago where they made this more uh, user friendly the it's more readable but you can see there are people using this service from all over the world from Jordan Japan Germany Mexico uh, Ireland Ukraine Russia uh, Costa Rica pretty much all over the world and we have ours over here too what's interesting is there's not that many in the US right now we are only one of two I've noticed on the East Coast there's one other in New Jersey um, but we're one of two that are actually sending you blocks uh, messages most people or companies are using the RTCM we're sending raw messages though however a um, little bit different but you can configure it however you'd like now when you're setting this up all you have to do is send them a email you download the program which runs in the background on your computer they'll set you up a mount point um, whatever name you want to uh, name it and they'll give you a password and username well, let's take a quick look at how ours is set up and currently running okay I took a couple of screenshots here of the snip caster on our base laptop um, this basically gives us an overview of what it looks like we are right here on our serial streams tab we are looking at our com7 port which is the 3dr radio receiver that is talking to the zf9p radio which is sending corrections um, down here we are displaying the contents of that data here you can see the binary UBX or UBlox messages and you can also see we're seeing the sending RTCM messages one thing of note when you're debugging this if you see here this 0213 that corresponds with the message handle that um, you'll see in the messages tab of view center so it'll say for this one it'll be 02 hyphen one three and um, depending on what message you send you can see that it's coming through now we're also logging this data and sending it through uh, the snip caster to our laptop and it will create a new file every four hours you can set that to four eight or 24 hours depending on how much data you're logging how large the files you want you can also set this up to FTP to a FTP site that you have control of then you can um, gain access to those files uh, remotely now <clears throat> our Skyhorse Tech 01 mount point that's what we saw earlier on RTK to go that is on the caster um, the Skyhorse, Skyhorse base source here we see is from our serial streams so we're reading in on our serial and we're pushing out um, to our RTK to go Skyhorse Tech 01 mount point now we can also have other options here of reading back our NEMA messages if we wanted to you get up to three ports for free so you could um, I you could theoretically read in from serial push out to your mount point and then read back if you needed to in our case we're using a third-party app on our rover side so we can read that information and those corrections and log them there so we don't need to do that here okay so at this point our corrections data being sent from the base is flying through the sky in the cloud and is accessible at our RTK to go website port 2101 from well potentially anywhere on earth but you probably want to be within 20 miles or so they say 10 kilometers or less but 
you can test depending on how many satellites you have uh, and other variables, line of sight to the sky, horizon, etc. So for us, we're using the Left Bureau and Trip client on an Android phone to pull in that corrections data and send it over via Bluetooth, send the RTCM messages to our rover. That data is then processed automatically in the ZF9P and then our corrected positions are sent back as NEMA messages to our phone through Bluetooth. I also want to show you real quick our left beer client and trip uh, settings on our phone. Um, these are pretty common. You'll see other websites out there that pretty much show you the same thing. Um, I think in our case, one of the important things here is setting up GPS mock locations. This enables our phone to run another app where, say, uh, Mapit GPS or GNSS Commander would uh, take in those mock locations through your phone and use those for marking locations such as GCPs or whatever else we need. We're also saving the intro data to a file for logging that information and testing it. Um, this is the Skyhorse Tech 01 mount point that we created through RTK to go and SNP. Um, you want to set your reported location as Android GPS and everything else here you can see is uh, pretty standard. Here's a quick shot of what it looks like on the left beer Intrip client. So we're disconnected at this point. We're going to go ahead and hit connect to connect by Bluetooth to the rover. Now that rover module is connected by Bluetooth to the phone. And now we're connecting to our Intrip caster, which is on RTK to go. Now, depending on your Wi-Fi or 3G connection, this might take a couple of minutes. But after a successful connection, you're going to see the status bar there. And you're going to see the data flowing. Now, we're, you start off with a DGPS connection. Then it pretty quickly goes to a float RTK. Then after, depending on where you are, it may take anywhere from four minutes to 12 minutes to get a, a full RTK fix. So in our base slash rover life cycle here, the final step is the rover sending back NEMA messages, specifically the GLL message back to the phone through Bluetooth. And this gives Left Bureau and also other apps the ability to show your lat long that is being calculated by the rover. Um, this is good for not only testing but also in production when you're needing to log your particular rover's position down to centimeter level um, and also for possible um, other testing later down the road. Now another thing I'd like to review is the use of Mission Planner. It's another free app program. Um, you can use this and you're going to need to use some sort of program to configure your radios if you have a system like ours. Your 3DR radios, um, they come with a default baud rate. Now if you have your system choosing a different baud rate, you're going to need to set that up, change it, and also switch over to send raw data instead of Mavlink. So in initial setup on the top there, we're going to go to optional hardware, sick radio. And here's where you would do that. Now there are several uh, instructional videos out there. We're not going to go through the details of this, but just know that if this doesn't work on the first try, don't give up. We have, uh, we had to do this probably five or six times 
hit a couple glitches, had to restart um, Mission Planner, and it sounds like other people have the same problem. Um, so it's not you, just keep at it and it'll finally work. Another great thing with this uh, Mission Planner is you can inject the RTK uh, GNSS corrections into your system, uh, whether UAS or ground-based. So for this, you would click on this RTK GPS inject on the left, and on the drop down, you're going to select in trip and hit connect. Here, you would select your RTK to go or SNP mount point. Click OK. And then, in a matter of seconds, you should see the RTK corrections being transmitted over your system, which is awesome for using those in a UAS or anything else. Well, that's probably enough information to go over in one video. We walked you through how to set up a base station and a rover, how to configure that in use sensor, how to set up SNP and RTK to go, how to use left bureau and trip client, and a couple of the things that are pretty helpful in setting up your original base and rover. Now in future videos, we're going to go over our testing process and how we set that up. Now we're going to go over to nearby Warren Community College here in New Jersey where they have a drone port with 12 GCPs that are professionally surveyed and we have their lat long height. So we can compare against that known professional grade uh, lat long against what we're finding. And then if necessary, we'll make some upgrades or updates to our settings. All right, until then, thank you and we'll talk to you soon.